So I got this big old bunch of parts because I'm doing some modifications to a bunch of these. These are phone flashers. They go on a plain old telephone system, a POTS system. So when the phone rings, that big red LED lights up. These are the ones I've already done. There's 20 of them here. I've got 20 more in that box and I've already got 40 out in the field. So we're gonna have 80 altogether once this is all said and done. So these are from Sandman.com, model PAP9Q-0001, large LED neon message waiting slash ring. Well, they're only going to be ring when I get done with them. And the reason I'm having to modify these is with our company phone system that we have, it doesn't actually provide enough voltage to like these new ones. We only get about a... Uh, a uh, 40 45 volt ring signal and it's just not enough to light these leds and uh it's in a factory environment it's very noisy and people want to be able to know the phone's ringing so here's what's in the pack large led neon message waiting ring from the telecom expert sandman.com and it does claim to be made in the usa there's an up close view of it there Get a little piece of double-sided adhesive tape and then a short little telephone jumper cord, which we don't even use, so we don't need any of that. So here's what's going on. I gotta gut this thing, add some parts to it, and make it work on a lower voltage ring signal. So underneath the made in the USA, there's a single screw. Once we take the screw out, the front comes off completely. And then we can get into the circuit board the meat and potatoes. So now in most cases, the circuit board just lifts out somewhat easily. And so there is a close up of the circuit board. You can see some other components around in here, a couple transistors, a couple resistors, and a 56 volt Zener diode down in there. That's actually in series with this LED. So here is the LED that's being used in here. And it's got a typical forward voltage of 5.1 volts and a steady current of 30 milliamps, which I'm designing these things to be way under. I think I'm putting about 15 milliamps into it once everything is said and done when the phone is ringing. So I've got a bunch of one microfarad 250 volt capacitors here. Got these from Newark, I do believe. Pretty sure they came from Newark. Yeah, there it is. 1-800-4-NEWARK is the phone number and there's some Part numbers if you need them for any reason. One microfarad 250 volt DC caps. And I got a bunch of 4.7K half watt resistors that we're gonna use in here as well. There they are, I got 100 of them. I've already used, uh, quite, I've already used 60 of them out of the 100. And then I've decided to use some 2.2 microfarad at 50 volt capacitors here. Couple different uh, ones. This is a uh, Panasonic, I do believe, that I'm holding in my hand. That's the one that we'll be putting in there. Okay, got all the parts out that I do not require. Put those in the pile over here. Now I'm gonna take one of the one microfarad 250 volt capacitors. And it's gonna go in place of the jumper. We're gonna use this as capacitive reactants, or as some people may like to call it a capacitive dropper. That is not the correct term, it is capacitance reactants. I'm gonna grab one 4.7K resistor Fold the lead over. And it's going to be kind of hard to show, but it's going to go in this terminal right here with the ring around it. And then the other one's going to go up here in this corner next to the number two that you can see right there. So it goes right there. I'm just going to bend it down semi flat. I'm going to bend the leads over just a tad. Next, the capacitor is going to go in. Positive lead in the square terminal. The 
the negative lead on the most upward facing there's another terminal that faces over here to the left it's going to go on the most upward facing terminal bend those over just a little bit so there's a close-up view of the bottom of the circuit board and then the top of the circuit board as the new parts populate all right now we'll just solder the parts into place Trim off the leads, everything looks good. And as you take and fold this resistor down so it's almost touching the board, just a little tiny gap there. So there it is assembled, ready to go back in the, back in the case. I usually do a test on it very fast just to make sure the LED lights and I'll show you what I do. So before I reassemble it back in the case, I have a live line right here. It's got about 45 volts on it. So if I plug it in here, I see a small flash. This is going to reverse the polarity, get a flash. I just want to make sure I see a flash every now and then. And now I'll go ahead and call it and make sure it lights up. So this is what it looks like when it's working. It's a nice, bright, deep red LED. It's very hard to show on the camera. There, you can kind of see it there. Now all that's left is we'll put it back in the case. Put the screw back in it and it's ready to go. Let me draw you a quick little schematic of what's going on inside here. Okay, so just very simply, we're using this capacitor to couple the AC voltage into that little bridge rectifier that is one of the only parts that remained on the board. The bridge rectifier and the LED are the only parts that I left there. We're taking the positive output of the bridge rectifier, going through a 4.7K half watt resistor and then filtering that with a 2.250 volt capacitor and then feeding that into the LED. So the reason I chose this 4.7K resistor is because the nature of using a capacitor as capacitive reactants is it's very dependent upon frequency. So I had some notes here when I was kind of doing some design and I chose a one microfarad capacitor because the phone rings at 25 Hertz and so the equivalent is 6.3K so I've got just over 10,000 ohms in series with this LED when it rings at 25 hertz. But the thing is, if the ring should start as a square wave and not be a sine wave, then this resistance drastically drops on the initial peak. So this little capacitor absorbs that surge. It takes time for it to charge. And this resistor uh, instantly charges up. And then as this capacitor charges, the voltage across this resistor becomes less and less as to not damage the LED quickly. So when the incoming sine wave comes in here, as it's pushing forward, the capacitor initially tries to resist that charge and acts as somewhat of a resistor, sends it through this bridge rectifier. Let's say it's going positive at this point, so it sends the positive through here, and then the negative follows back this direction. We charge that resistor slightly, charge that capacitor, and indicate that LED. Now, as the charge goes negative, then, of course, a negative charge occurs here across this diode. And then this diode conducts the other half of the sine wave and lights the LED in the same way. So hopefully you can understand my gobbledygook on the repair and modification of these made in USA by the Sandman.com company. LED phone flashers, they work quite well, especially in a very noisy environment application all right well there are the spare parts all 40 have been modified so you should see 80 resistors 80 transistors and 40 zener diodes and then 40 jumpers uh, one may have fallen out here or there hard to say but there they all are 40 of them ready to go be installed out in the field in the noisy environment i certainly hope this video has helped somebody please consider subscribing 
and ring that bell to get future notifications. I appreciate your views, your comments, your support. I try to answer them when I can, so go ahead and leave a comment, good or bad, and I'll try to get back to you. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching these videos. Bye-bye.